Hey guys, back with another review, and this time it's of 2014's Northman, a Viking saga. And it stars Ed Skewin, Ryan Quanton, James Norton, Tom Hopper, Charlie Murphy, uh, Leo Gregory, Ken Dukan, and so many others. So basically, this is one of those films which was recommended to me by my good friend John Quintero. He's a big fan of Viking movies. Just thought I'd put that in there because it's a recommendation. Um, so basically, the film starts out with these Vikings being shipped back to, onto an uh, island. That island is Scotland. Yes, it's Scotland. They wake up, they've lost all their possessions except for their swords and their axes. So far, far you can see they're very, very heavy items. And they didn't sink. So they get up. They then find out that there's some Scots in the area about to attack them with bows and arrows on horseback. The Vikings, because there's only six or seven of them. I can't remember the exact amount. But I know it was a very low amount. They kill the Scots. And that's when they made Ingen. Ingen, the daughter of the King of Scotland. They take her hostage because they want to take her ransom so they can get off the island and basically survive. But what happens? The King of Scotland finds out that they've got his daughter, sends his mercenaries who've got skulls on the back of their heads like they're part of Skeletor's army, and they're completely in black to go and get her back. But that's not where the plot beckons. The two main characters on the Scottish side decide they want to kill the daughter because her rolling with someone else will be far worse than, you know, when the king dies. So, we're like, uh-oh, the Vikings are going to rape and pillage her, they're going to take care of business, and they're going to come along and kill her and the Vikings, and we're like, yes, this is going to be good. Well, for a B-movie... It was alright, but let's carry on going. So, Ryan Quanton, who was in True Blood, Home of the Way, and so forth, he plays Connell, if I said that right, or Connell, uh, a monk, a very cool monk, who can use a staff and kick some ass, and all sorts of stuff. Best character in the movie was Connell. So, I uh, was cheering for him the whole way through. See, the Vikings, they didn't look rugged enough. They didn't look hard enough, you know. They didn't look... And when you think of Vikings, you think of raping, purging, and not running away. Now, in this movie, the Vikings run away quite a bit. They uh, seem, they're really skinny and shrimpish, and you're like, yeah, these are not warriors. These are the wimpy Vikings. We want the warrior Vikings. And the one guy that did look like he could have been a hard Viking, guys, at the beginning. So, as we go along the story, there's a romance going on between Abjorn and Ingen, which really is, has no chemistry, goes nowhere, it's just absolutely terrible. Now, the good things about the movie, for a B-movie, the action was fairly decent. There were some really good action set pieces. There's a bit where the Vikings set traps and the people fall into the traps, the mercenaries. And it goes really well. Awesome. Really enjoyed that. Thought the film itself was great. Action packed. But there were so many inconsistencies to it. You know. But Vikings wouldn't do. Or they wouldn't have. Like, oh, like when they go somewhere. Why wouldn't they go somewhere and rape people? That's what we want to see. Vikings did this stuff. We want to see hard nosed Vikings. That did really horrible things. But no. Not in this. So. The movie, to be honest, I like the chemistry between the monk and the Vikings. It, being a Christian, there's a bit in it where the Vikings go, he's not so bad for a Christian. And they, there's a conversation between Absalom and the monk about Christianity and about the Viking gods. Now they're powerful and his god isn't. And it's kind of interesting because when you watch the characters develop together... It's not really that bad. There's some real good character development. Now, and Leo Gregory in it, who is one of the worst actors Britain has, and I'm sure he's dubbed in the movie, because he sounds nothing like himself. I'm sure someone else was, and no, I just can't remember who they were. 
Now, the movie's about an hour and 37 minutes long. It's worth watching. It's one of those films that, to be fair, I would never have watched if I had been recommended it. Now, it seems like I've said a lot of negative uh, thoughts about it, but I actually did enjoy it. I thought overall it was a good film. I just felt like it could have been a lot better if it had have had the right ingredients that would have made it. Do I really think the Vikings should rape people in it? No. But would I have liked to have seen that? Yes, but not like on screen, if you know what I mean. I'd like to have seen it implied. But it's not that kind of movie. The Scots are the bad guys, the Vikings are the good guys, or bad guys that turn good, and so forth. One of the last things I want to say before I end this with you is there's a bit in it where they all decide they want to jump a hundred feet into water and they all survive. Even the old man biking, who's got to be about 63 or something, he jumps down, he survives, and you're like, this movie is ridiculous. It's not supposed to be taken seriously. And that's one of the things I did like about the movie. I also did like the villains because they had this kind of, you know, they had this like darkness. I did like that. So yeah, overall... I recommend giving it a watch if you like Viking movies, especially if you're that type of person who likes action movies and Vikings for the sake of Vikings, you'd like this movie. If you're a purist, I doubt you'll like it that much, but if you're an action fan, you'll like it, but just remember not to expect much because it is a B movie after all. So, as always guys, thanks for watching. If you haven't already, please subscribe and take care. See you later guys.